So we are going to start with the big data and Hadoop topics. So what actually okay. do you mean by the big data? Mm -hmm. So we have seen some definitions for the big data that yeah. big data is simply the bulk of data or data in a big quantity. There is the only mm -hmm. definition for this one. Then we have a question here, how big uh, our data should be? So it should be in a big quantity and it's in such a large size that it cannot be able to be used and uh, stored in the RDBMS. So whatever the mm -hmm. traditional RDBMS we are using like the uh, means uh, Oracle, MySQL. So our data should be not in a position that we can handle and process that in a RDBMS. So mm -hmm. this is the big data. Now, from uh, before going to the concept of the big data and something like that, we have to move towards the history. So I hope you have already remembered something about the history part of the big data, why it's known as the big data. So yeah. in the yeah, in the initial period in 2003 and 4, the Google has generated some ideas that is known as the Google file Google file system, and second one was the MapReduce. So that GFS Google file system was for the uh, means simply the storage and map reduce for the processing of that stored data okay but the Google didn't implement that data it simply given the idea later on after the uh, later on the next year to and five and six the Yahoo take the same idea okay and simply given uh, implemented the whatever the idea the Google people has given the Yahoo people has implemented that the person who has developed the Hadoop was known as the dog cutting and my cafe area. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this is the only the history. Uh, I hope you remember each and everything. If you are mm -hmm. not remembering, then you can uh, just go through the PPT and the videos also. It will be easy to you. Okay. So now we have to move towards mm -hmm. the big data. What actually this big data is? Okay. So big data is simply the lot of data. So data may be in the terabyte or the petabyte, something like that and we can go for that one also that is a zettabyte okay so uh, in our in 2006 our digital universe whatever the our digital universe size was only the 0 0.18 zettabytes okay and it was estimated that it will be around 7.9 in the 2015 okay, okay so in uh, after after every two years our data uh, size is growing simply doubled okay Mm. And we have seen the big data definition that is the, it is a large set of the com large and the complex data which cannot be handled into the traditional RDBMS. Okay. Now, uh, we have to see from where these data are growing right now. Could you give me some example from where these big data are, has been growing and coming into picture? Yeah, uh, that is you said that uh, from social network websites. Yeah, mm -hmm. the social media uh, and uh, like Facebook, Facebook is generating 5,000, uh, 500 TV uh, data mm -hmm. per day. And then ads like, um, that the uh, flight of uh, ad travels, mm -hmm. sensor data. Mm -hmm. Some of the companies like the uh, online uh, mega stores uh, like uh, Amazon, eBay and the aeroplane yeah. services, uh, electricity yeah. board. So data are all generating the Twitter is out of India. The Twitter is very common, and so from Twitter, LinkedIn, all are uh, mm. major generator of the data. So whatever the data generated from the online media, it's totally the unstructured mm. data. In and the RDBMS is something related to the structured data. Okay, whatever the data it is in the RDBMS, it will be a structure that it will be arranged in the form of the tables that is the row and columns but uh, whatever the data we are generating right now it's totally the unstructured so it will also be a reason that why we need the Hadoop and the big data because in RDBMS we can store only the structured data and in our market whatever the digital market we are getting we are generating only the unstructured data okay uh, Hadoop is one way to, uh, that will be used for processing unstructured data yeah, right uh, now. Any other tools like that? No, actually the Hadoop is totally the framework. Okay, and in the Hadoop technology, mm -hmm. we have the different different uh, tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, like if you are familiar with the Java programming language, we can go, go for the MapReduce programming. If you are not mm -hmm. familiar with that, you know the basic scripting type language, then we can go for the Pig. 
and if you are familiar with the SQL type uh, means uh, query type language then we can go for the high and edge based something like that so for each and every section we have some tools in our big and big data Hadoop framework okay mm -hmm. so when we move towards that level we can uh, go for the uh, means simply the query and means example in your system so whatever the con configuration of your systems I think uh, Linux is present in your system Linux Ubuntu any anyone yeah, uh, actually I installed Ubuntu uh, through VMware. Ah, no problem, it's required in the VMware, okay. So, but, uh, uh, but if the system has a, a 4 GB RAM, whether that will be okay or it needs 8 GB RAM? No, no, the minimum requirement is 4 GB and for the normal purpose, if 2 GB RAM is uh, there, it's also okay. In, in my system, it's 2 GB. Whatever the system, uh, right now I'm using, it's 2 GB and I'm using the MapReduce, USB, Hive, all the things, okay. It's a little bit slow, but it will work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, operating system, post operating system, should be 64 one. I'm yeah. having Windows 7, which is 32 bit. Uh, whether we require 64 bit OS? No, for that Windows, we don't have any configuration requirement. You just simply install the virtual machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in that, you have to configure the Linux any versions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Linux, Ubuntu, anyone. I'll show you and tell you also how to install that one okay mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, now we have to move towards the next sections mm -hmm. of our topic that is the big data and Hadoop so we have also seen that there are types of the data that is the structured data mm -hmm. unstructured data and semi structured data a structured mm -hmm. data that it will be stored in the RDBMS unstructured which are totally the image audio video files okay that we are mm -hmm. generating from the our online media sites okay mm -hmm. That is the social media. Now, what is the question of the semi structure? Semi, what is semi structure? Any idea? No idea. I not yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So, semi structure data is simply the log files. Whatever the log files mm -hmm. we are generating means when you are going to log into your Gmail, Facebook, anywhere, uh, one logging time will be maintained by your system. When you log out, it will be one generate one uh, log out time. So, that file is totally the semi structure data. Okay. And yeah. that is yeah, that is the log files. Now we have to see, and uh, on the screen right now you may be able to see one diagram. Are you able to see that mm -hmm. graph? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So see here, up to the 1990s, like uh, this one. Mm -hmm. So see here, uh, type of the complex and the unstructured data, it's around almost zero. But after the 1990s, when the, our online or the social media came into picture. Till now, mm -hmm. we can see that our RDBMS, that is the structured data size, is constantly growing. Okay, but mm -hmm. see what is the drastic change in the unstructured data? It's almost uh, around uh, more than 10 percent, uh, 100 percent is the unstructured data. That is in the orange color. You may be able to see this diagram. Okay, mm -hmm. it means simply after the two years, uh, the size of the unstructured data will grow. See here. 90% of the world data created in the last two years. Okay. In this graph, you may be able to see on the left hand side, you will be on seeing the bar graph now. Here, 12, 11, 10. So, in the 10, see what is the quantity and the size of our big data. Now, in 2012, see what is the size of the data. So, you can imagine that in uh, last uh, two years, our data has been just going so much uh, size. So whatever the data that we are generating from the online social media, something like that, out of 100%, the total uh, of 100%, 70% of data is simply the unstructured data, okay? That cannot be stored in any RDBMS and only the 30% is the structured data, okay? Yeah, any uh, question here right now? Because... Uh, actually, uh, uh, Three weeks are there, right? Uh, volume, velocity. Yeah, and that, uh, and that like will, and that uh, we will see right now. Uh, no, yeah. Th till now, any question? Uh, not no. Okay, so based on this uh, type and the structure of the data, we have the certain comparison between the RDBMS and the MapReduce. That is the Hadoop. So if we are yeah, using, can you explain the uh, what is the vertical scalability? Huh? A scalability means simply which can be measured. Okay. 
that all the points uh, it will be uh, coming in our next topic because we are going to revise it and everything so first we have to see one simple and the basic comparison between the rdb mesh and the uh, mains hadoop okay so first first point here is the first point that is the data size in rdb mesh we can store only the data size up to in the gigabytes only okay but you are moving towards the hadoop we can store the petabytes jettabytes the size is are too large as compared to the rdb mesh okay and there mm -hmm. are such the only the basic comparison between the rdb mesh and the map reduce that is the hadoop includes for the data size okay and the remaining size uh, remaining points are the not uh, exact means it's not a complex one so you can read it by your own now you have asked a question about the volume velocity and variety something like that so based on the based on the type of the data and the how to process that data the ibm people the ibm development team has given one definition for the big data into the three words that is the first one is the volume second one is the velocity and third one is the variety what is volume volume is simply the data size okay means how big your data is that is related to uh, that is known as the volume then we have the velocity velocity is simply the speed means how fast we can access our uh, stored data suppose you have one condition that you have uh, in your system laptop that uh, right now you have only the suppose you have a space of the uh, 360 gb okay now you have to store a uh, thousand of the movies which is a high definition so it will be not stored there so what will be uh, possible stance you can store some of the movie into your uh, external hard disk or the dvd drive and keep it somewhere okay but uh, when you are it will be store your data now a question arises here when you are going to the market or anywhere you will not carry dot uh, that uh, dvd and the external hard drive na so at that mm -hmm. time if you need that data it will be very uh, hard to make use of that because that data is not present with you okay so here storage the first point of our hadoop system is that is the storage and second is the assessing that data so storage is the not problem we can store our data at any location any where okay but main problem is that how fast we can assess means how we can make use of that data so for that we have the concept that is known as the velocity that is the speed of change means at uh, how fast we can assess our stored data now third type, third point in this ibm definition is simply the variety what is this variety means to you it's simply the types of the data that is a structure and structure and semi structure okay now tell me what was the your question that is related to uh, velocity variety uh, yeah uh, there are other one more uh, feature like velocity right uh, what is the actual velocity velocity means suppose if you have anything uh, anywhere you have a store your data okay now we have to use that data so how fast you can use means if you have to save something if you have to take the data from your uh, no actually not velocity uh, it's veracity v e r a c i t y sorry veracity v e r a c i t y yeah one so more feature one more thing there that no that is not only one more uh, apart from this we have the 30 uh, th around 13 to 14 v that in the definition of the big data so whatever the your question uh, that is the v you can uh, send it uh, to me i'll just uh, get back to you okay for that one okay. but but the very basic okay. requirement for the ibm definition is only three v's that is the volume velocity and variety mm -hmm. okay this is the only main mm -hmm. one apart from this three we have the around mm -hmm. 13 total 13 uh, points that will that is not the compulsory and mm -hmm. that is not the also the essential okay yeah. now uh, after this this is the velocity volume velocity now just tell me some of the company who is using right now the uh, hadoop concept uh facebook linkedin hmm so on the screen you may be able to see one uh, picture where the name of the company is mentioned how big it's growing in size almost mm -hmm. all of the mnc company who is working on the data and not working on data they are all using the 
third concept okay now this is all about the big data means what is the big data okay then this is our the only the brief introduction about the big data concept after that we have to see the hadoop means what actually the hadoop is okay so any question in the big data or we can move further mm -hmm. yeah we can go okay now we have to see the concept of the hadoop okay what actually the hadoop is so before going to the hadoop we have to understand one theme that is known as the dfs what is the dfs dfs is simply the distributed file system okay when you have to download one movie or any song what do you do how you are um, going to, just, huh tell me um how i do i just download it uh, from the website okay or there may be a chance that you can simply go and into google and type your song or the movie name and you will get a lot many links okay and at the time you can be able to download or get your movie and the whatever you are downloading you can get it from the any of the links so that all links are not present at your mm -hmm. local local server it may be present in the any corner of the world okay okay so that and how you are accessing yeah. you are accessing from the cloud means in the cloud each and every movie has been uploaded by the particular uh, means uh, uh, companies and they has given only this links when you just click on one link in the uh, google given by you means uh, given by the google uh, your movie will start downloading so you don't know where that actually the server is and where from where you, you are going. yeah hello hello, hello. yeah are you able to listen or not hello hello actually a lot many noise coming from your side just check it out oh no actually there are some A disturbance is coming from your side. Okay. Oh, uh, from my side, I know, I know, I know. I'm just getting a little bit of a problem. Okay, okay. Now you are able to listen, na? Yeah, I just can't hear from the previous one. Mm-hmm. If you are, if you will use the headphone, it will not come. Yeah, I'm using the headphone actually. Mm-hmm. Okay, just be on light. I'll check it. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's okay now. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Now we are discussing about the some point that is known as the DFS. That is the distributed mm -hmm. file system. What ex ex exactly that distributed file system? It's simply the uh, files that are available in the cloud, and it may be given in the cloud from the any part of the location. Means it's simply distributed all over the world. Okay. So before going to the distributed file system definition, something like that. we can see one diagram that may be able to uh, you may be able to see it on the screen so on the very left hand side you are able to seeing this one yeah no i can yeah so this is a one of the server which is available from the chicago with some other home dir this is from the projects this is from the some other location this is from the other locations this was the case when we don't have the concept of the distributed file system now if we have the concept of the distributed file system all these uh, four left hand side servers will be merged into one location and it will be provided to you okay so you can easily access the data from a single server only now see on the right hand side there is only one server okay and which has all the data related from from this all left four hand side servers so 
this is clear yeah yeah, yeah. so we uh, now we have to see what is the distributed file system distributed file system simply known as the client server based application where we can access the data very fast okay that once you make request to the server a server will give you a lot of many links and from that links you can be able to easily able to uh, download your requirements so that is the distributed file system now we have the one concept why we are going for the distributed file system why is there any particular reason with you why we need that distributed file system no so see on a screen you may be able to see one diagram on the left hand side and on the right hand side are you able to see this one so on the on the left hand side there is a single one that is a single machine which have the a speed of 100 mbps per second and it has only four input output channel okay now this machine has to read 1 tb of data this 1 tb of data has to be read by this machine only could you imagine how much time it will take it will take around 40 minutes okay just okay. divide that 1 tb by the uh, speed into uh, the seconds okay uh, how much 1000 uh, 1 tb 10024 yes Yeah. Uh, how to, uh, how will you say that uh, time? So here one zero two four will be your data size. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh. now how many input output channels in this one? It has around uh, four input output channel. So just simply divide it by four. What you will get? Thousand six hundred divided by four. Yes. that is the not a requirement and the concept something like that so you just uh, see uh, when you are going to just calculate it just simply you have the data size that is known as a 1 tb so 1 tb multiplied by 4 input output how much it will be mm-hmm. it will be around 4096 okay Mm-hmm. when you just uh, f- divide that 4096 by 100 because the speed time is 100 you will get around 40 minutes 40 minutes mm-hmm. 96 seconds something like that okay mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. it will be your required time if you have only one machine now here a concept is that you can't wait for 40 minutes to read that complete file mm-hmm. then if you are waiting for the 40 minute uh, what will you do in that 40 minute you simply waste your time now i'll just there is a condition that i can increase the speed of this machine okay or i can add some other machine so if you are uh, going to add some other machine it will be better why because each and every machines will have certain architecture style that it can support up to this much speed only okay now i'll give one work to you i i'm going to give you a uh, work that you have to write the 100 pages okay 100 pages you have to write 100 pages notes i'm i don't want uh, how you are going to write i don't know but i want only that you should provide me the 100 pages note within 5 minutes how will give to how you are going to provide me that one is it possible that you can write 100 pages notes in 5 minutes no Or yes. Yeah, uh, it is not possible. It's not possible because in the five minutes you can't write the hundred pages mm. if you mm. are writing yourself. Then there is a chance that you can bring ten of your friends and you can give mm. the some ten ten pages to each and every friends and you can start writing. What will happen mm. after some uh, five to ten minutes? You will finish that hundred pages note. Okay. Mm. So here, what is happening? All the all your friends are working parallelly with you okay mm-hmm. means if all the friends will working work parallelly with you then your work will be completed in a less time okay mm-hmm. 
so same work i am doing here For earlier we were having 1 tb of file that i have to read by a single machine now i am using the 10 machines on the right hand side you may be able to see that i am using the 10 machines what will happen whatever the time taken by the first case it will be simply taken the 10 times of that one means earlier if mm -hmm. it is taking the 40 minutes now it will take me 4 minutes only so this is the concept of the distributed means if you are uh, distributing your work it will be done very soon okay mm -hmm. this is the concept of the distributed file system now in hadoop we have in the google also we have the file system that is known as a google file system in hadoop we have the modification of that file system that is known as the hadoop distributed file system okay now we have seen with the distributed file systems only you didn't see the hadoop distributed file system so before going to that one we have to just see something about the hadoop what actually the hadoop is what is the hadoop Uh, it is a tool for manipulating a uh, large number of data. Yeah. So Hadoop is something that is that can have the capability for uh, storing and processing the big data. Okay. That is the concept of the big data. Hadoop. And now oh. we can see Hadoop is the open source framework. What is the meaning of the open source framework? It anybody can use it without paying mm -hmm. any money. that is the open source framework okay yeah. yeah and the similar we can say that hadoop is a concept that is totally capable of dealing with the big data concept whatever the problems in the big data we have we can uh, solve that problems with the hadoop okay and this hadoop programming language is totally written into the java programming language so if you have the knowledge of the java you can easily understand and write the hadoop programming okay and for the people who doesn't have the knowledge about the java programming we have the some alternatives to that one so what is the hadoop on the screen you may be able to see one definition for that one that is a it is a scalable first feature that is a fault tolerance distributed file system for data storage and processing what is the meaning of the fault tolerance any means it should be in certain position that if any fault is occurring it can just uh it has the, it should be the capacity that it can manage that one okay mm. yeah that is the fault tolerance then it is scalable 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 simply means it should be in certain uh measuring quantity okay mm. yeah so This is the definition of the Hadoop. That is, it is a fault tolerance, escalable, distributed file system for both the cases, for the storage also and for the processing also. Now we have to see the core components of the Hadoop. What is inside the Hadoop? Hadoop is simply the name, and it is a framework. But what is present inside that Hadoop? So Hadoop has totally two main component. That is, first one is known as the SDFS. that is for the storage and second one is the map reduce that is related to the processing of that one sdfs is related to any idea the storage um it's to this is related to i can't get the question sorry i can't get you means my question is hadoop has the two major components okay Mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. one is the sdfs second one is mm -hmm. the map reduce okay. so this sdfs is related with the storage part okay means mm -hmm. whatever the big mm -hmm. data we have quantity we have to mm -hmm. store that data using the sdfs concept only mm -hmm. and second one is the map reduce what is that map reduce it is for computation yeah so for the processing of that one so what are the certain characteristics of the hadoop if any language or if any person is there in this world then then uh, there may I, then there should be certain characteristic of that person or feature of that person suppose i am the person and you are the person so we all are the persons and we have some separate separate characteristics okay similar to that one hadoop 
is there in the market then what are the different features or the characteristics of the hadoop you are getting my question what are the features or the characteristics of the hadoop so on the screen you may be able to see some diagram in that it is mentioned the hadoop features and first one is the flexible flexible means what it should be used according oh. according to our need means whatever the condition we are in we can make use of that one okay mm. it should be flexible second one is the reliable what is the meaning of reliable that it should produce me the correct output okay that is the reliable mm. then third one is the economical if it is producing the correct output and it is flexible it doesn't means that uh, for doing a single work i have to pay a lot of the money so mm -hmm. that is the economical that is the it means that it should be low cost okay then third one is the scalable means scalable that it can be measured means there should be certain limitations that it can measure so these are the various four features and the characteristics of the hadoop now we have to see where we can use the hadoop what are the different conditions where we can make use of the hadoop any idea for that one so we have seen that uh, something that is known as the log files okay so mm -hmm. for storing that log files we can make use of the hadoop okay now mm -hmm. we have the concept of searching in the case of the searching we can also make the use of the hadoop how we are uh, making use of the hadoop in the case of searching so when we will deal with some programs uh, during the pig and hive it will be clear to you mm. yeah so these are the what are the various company that are using the hadoop that can be represented in the diagram on the your screen mm. yeah. yeah yahoo ibm facebook google twitter mm. something like that so these are the different different companies now we have seen the core components of the hadoop that is the two core components so hadoop in the market is available in the two versions that is the hadoop version 1 and hadoop version 2 okay so most of the company that are using the hadoop that are dealing with the only hadoop version 1 because hadoop uh, version 1 is not uh, totally used and it is not comfortable by all the company so they are dealing with uh, the hadoop version 1 only so we can see first hadoop version 1 then we can see what are the different changes we have in the hadoop version 2 okay so in hadoop version 1 we have seen that we have the two core component that is known as the sdfs and map reduce mm -hmm. and sdfs is related to the storage and map reduce is related to the processing of that one so see on the screen you may be able to see two diagrams two figures that is dealing with the hadoop version 1 and hadoop version 2 are you seeing this one yeah yeah see in the case of hadoop version 1 we have on the from the bottom most only we can see that sdfs this is sdfs that is related to the storage okay then mm. on the top of that sdfs we have map reduce what is the map reduce that is related with the processing of our data okay now apart from this map reduce we have some extra features that is the pig and hive and some others in the hadoop version 1 so what is that pig pig is known to be some alternative it is not 100% alternative for the map reduce but it is somewhat alternative so if you are knowledge having the knowledge of the java programming you can write the same query in the map reduce and if you don't have the knowledge of the java then you can uh, do your work using the pig so if you have the work of the suppose uh, word counting word counting then word counting can be done using the map reduce also and pig also if you have the interest in java programming you can go for the map reduce if you don't have the interest you can simply go for the pig now here a question arises is which one you want to use apart from the java programming so see if you are going to write the map reduce programming in the eclipse using the java it will take around um, 150 to 200 lines for simple word count example okay and same thing if you are using going to 
uh, write uh, that word count using the pig it will take around four to five lines which one you you will prefer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pig, pig. Okay. yeah so that is the question that you uh, can but uh, uh, map reduce uses java uh, high use sql uh, what is the language pig you using pig is simply the scripting language there is no particular relation so whatever the work you are uh, doing with the map reduce same work you can do it by using the pig okay mm -hmm. so that is the very easy so after the map reduce means this theoretical person we can go for the pig then it will be uh, clear to you so this is the hadoop version 1.0 now we have to see the hadoop version 2.0 see in the case of 2.0 a lot many features has been introduced here first we have the sdfs common to both of them and here sdfs 2 is there that is the version 2 then map reduce what is this map reduce this map reduce is in the case of hadoop version 1 but in the case of map reduce means hadoop 2 this map reduce will be also known as the map reduce 2 and the map reduce 2 is known as yarn okay yarn is the name for the map reduce 2 then apart from this pig and hive we have something like that, the MR hive uh, that is RTS graphics HBS something so we can see uh, the required things in our upcoming topics before that we have to deal with the Hadoop 1.0 only now we so have actually map reduce uh, 2 was seen in the Sion is it so? yeah 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 map reduce 2 is known as yarn in the case of the Hadoop 2 point version okay mm -hmm. Now we have seen something about that. So this is the Hadoop ecosystem. On your screen, you may be able to see one figure that is the Hadoop ecosystem. You are seeing this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So see here, the right hand side bottom one, that is the SDFS. Mm -hmm. For running any of the technology related to the Hadoop, we need the SDFS. Okay? because we have to store the data in the SDFS only we can't store anywhere so for that purpose we need the SDFS for the storing now on the top of this SDFS you may be able to see the first one from the right hand side you may be able to see HBase ok mm -hmm. you are seeing this so this HBase is not on the top of this map reduce it is on the top of the SDFS only what does <coughs> what is the meaning you are getting from this one any idea you are getting from this one no idea so see yeah. what yeah what's the difference between uh, HDF and HDF both are different different technology uh, SDFS yeah. SDFS is simply the storage area where mm -hmm. you can store the normal form and HBS is also a storage area like the SQL only but what some difference in the case of HBase whatever you are going to store so earlier in the case of the normal RDBMS how your data was stored it was stored in the form of the row and columns right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in the case of HBase all your data will be stored only in the form of the row um, that is in the form of the columns there is no row okay all data will be stored in the form of columns only there is no concept of the row so that we can see in the upcoming classes so see here so SDFS on the top of SDFS we have the map reduce or the yarn yarn or the map reduce version 2 what actually this means on the top of the SDFS it simply means that for running this map reduce programming we require the SDFS okay this is the meaning then mm -hmm. we have also on the top of this yarn or the map reduce we have uji some pig mahot r connector hive so all are related with the some different different work okay so these are on the top of map reduce and this map reduce is on the top of sdfs what is the meaning of this one so the meaning of this one is that for running any of this technology uji pig mahot r connector hive okay first your map reduce and SDFS should be installing in working in your system this is the meaning means for running the pig or the R connector or the hive we require MapReduce also 
okay but in the case of h base that is in the right hand side you may be able to see that this h base is not on the top of this map reduce or the yarn mm -hmm. it means simply that for running the h base we require only h def is not the map reduce mm -hmm. on the left hand side also flum uh, scoop zoo keeper and then on the top of all this one we have one ambari so for running this ambari concept we need each and everything should be working then only we can go for the ambari okay so uh, you have the knowledge for the java no yeah okay so if you are going for the developer side something like that you required only this uh, three and four from this one first one mm -hmm. requirement will be your map reduce programming okay mm -hmm. then second one will be pig because you have told already that a pig will be easy for use both mm -hmm. uh, so map reduce pig and then hive because mm -hmm. anywhere you are dealing with the some query processing for that pro query processing we require the hive this hive is almost similar to the mysql uh, mysql data mm -hmm. types okay if you have the knowledge of these three uh, you can uh, go for any of the hadoop one okay mm -hmm. now uh, we have to see some different points we have seen all these points the core component hadoop sdfs map reduce see now we have to move towards the where we have to see towards the sdfs the first component of the hadoop okay so first component of the hadoop was the sdfs and second was the map reduce so first we have to see the sdfs on the screen you may be able to see one slides where the sdfs and some points are written in the circles mm -hmm. so that all points are the features of this sdfs what are the different features of the sdfs so see here this is the one of the feature that is the high throughput high throughput means what what is the meaning of this high throughput uh, amount of possibility given yes amount of yes 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 that its performance should be high means it will produce the high output now second one uh, the important you can see here it will be large data set means your sdfs in should be in such a position that it could be deal with large data set <clears throat> then we have here one feature that is known as the data replication what is the meaning of this data replication uh, means in the case of the hadoop it is replicated on many yeah, yeah. Uh, yes things. yes so simply data replication means duplication mm -hmm. means it will be copied to different different locus mm -hmm. if you are going to give one single data to the hadoop system that single data mm -hmm. will be by default copied to the three location three different location mm -hmm. only for the purpose of the safety means if if you lost any one you can make use of the other one okay next one we have the write once read many as we are dealing with the some uh, map reduce programming so that is related to the java so it may be one of the feature that is the write once read any it is the feature of the java one only okay now again one of the most important feature on the right top corner you can see that commodity hardware what is the meaning of the commodity hardware so commodity means commodity hardware simply means cheap hardware means cost mm -hmm. should not be high okay mm -hmm. if you are using the some uh, 5 to 10 computers in your uh, system for the hadoop programming okay so it's mm -hmm. cost so it should be run in a cheap cost means uh, price should not be high that is known as the commodity hardware that is the cheap hardware okay clear or not yeah okay. okay then we have seen the same uh, features what we are seeing now on the screen that is the sdf has some points has been written just try to read all the points if any confusion you can uh, go for that one i think each and every one will be clear that is the high throughput high fault tolerance suitable for uh, that one uh, five system makes this i, I don't know which one five system makes this in previous slide where it is file system uh, data streaming names um, before before slide okay uh, 
get lost from file, file system. system. Yeah, so file system namespace is the something uh, when we deal with the uh, SDFS, na, we have to provide the some namespace that it should not. Be, you are aware of the namespace uh, namespace concept in the C++? Mm -hmm. No. So it is dealing with simply the one particular name. We can see it in the upcoming class when we are going for the configuration of the Hadoop. Now we can see each and everything. Okay. For now, we can simply keep all the features in my mind or in your mind also. <laughs> yeah. So uh, timing is okay for you, now? This timing? Uh huh. That's what. Uh, okay. Then we have to see the one definition for the SDFS. We have seen only the SDFS that is related to the storage. Now we have to see one definition. Anybody can ask what is the SDFS, then what should be the answer. So we can simply say that SDFS is a file system, okay, which is designed for the storage of the large data files or large files and it should be run on a commodity hardware. Commodity hardware means cheap hardware. If you are, you are dealing with the, some large files, then it doesn't mean that you, uh, the cost and the pricing for will be that will be high. It should be less. Mm -hmm. There are certain different features of the SDFS. What we have seen, or we, some features we have not seen, and the figure. So all are mentioned here. What are the goals? Means if SDFS, uh, you are going to use the SDFS. What should be features and goals you have to keep it in mind. So first one is the fault tolerance. It will yeah, be I just read this, uh, Yeah, yeah. I can read it also. Okay. Just read it. If you have any confusion we can uh, see uh, it in the I will. Yeah, tomorrow class. Now we are using there are certain features, means the situations where the we are generating the large files, but we can't be make uh, use of the Hadoop there. There may be a certain situations where uh, large files will be generated per day but we are not using the Hadoop concept over there so for that we have to one topic that is the areas where SDFS is not a good fit right now for the today's market it may be a uh, good uh, it may be used in the future okay but today we are not using the SDFS in certain areas though we have the large files so for that, what are the different different areas? So first point is the low latency data access. What is that low latency data is? Then we have the lots of small files. Then we have the multiple data arbitrary file modifications. So all the three features has been explained here. See, we have seen the low latency data sets. Okay, what is that meaning? Meaning to you? Something like the bank transaction, where you have to uh, maintain the records fastly okay yeah. yeah so in that case we can't make use of SDFS why mm -hmm. because if you are going to store the SDF uh, it on the SDFS it will take some time to process that data okay mm -hmm. so for that we have the uh, technique uh, technical word that is known as the low latency just read it it will be clear then second one is the for lots of small files yeah, the banks are generating the uh, large files, no, no doubt. But how we, that uh, data is? It's in the form of the small, small pieces. So see, just uh, uh, take one example. If you have to take uh, 1000 rupees with you, okay? Now, there is a uh, two situations that you can either take the 1000 single note, okay? Mm -hmm. To your uh, purse, and then second is the, you can make use of the uh, 10 rupees notes of the 1000. Yeah. Which one will be preferred mm -hmm. by you? Yeah, first one. First one? Why? Mm, that's easier to go with. Uh, yeah, means it is easier to store and you can use the same amount. It is the same amount so you can use the uh, anywhere. So here, mm -hmm. the second point that is the lots of uh, small files. That is the same thing. If your data is large, then we can go for the map reduce or the Hadoop. But your data should be in the large as a single file, not as a small, small file. We can make the thousand files and then we can uh, tell that this is a large file. Okay. Then in that time, uh, we can have some problem. Okay. 
what what will be the problem a storage will be not problem but for using assessing that data suppose there is a room big room where a single file is there now another room big room is there with there are small pieces a small a small uh, files is there then if you are going to search any file in the second case it will be a lot of problem okay that is the lots of a small file is also one of the problem or the drawback of the sdfs in our today's market now say third point what was the third point third point will be the multiple writers operations so here what is happening suppose if you are going to update your records very fastly means each and every time you are going to update your records then it will be also one of the conditions where the hadoop and sdfs is not preferred to use okay why because you are going to update uh, your files uh, each and every minute so that will be also one of the problem mm -hmm. now before that we have some topic any question uh, right now mm -hmm. no question mm -hmm. we can continue some of the topics or we can continue in the tomorrow class yeah depends on the time just just tell me Um, okay, how long this one? Okay. Ah, no, we have the lot many topics. That is the um, uh, various components. Inside name, mm -hmm. node, data node. Is there there are around five different different nodes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So then then we can proceed uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So same timing. There is no problem, na? No. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, no problem with that. Uh, But I am having a doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. When we get the Hadoop installation, after okay. seeing these components, now whatever the components we have to see here, that is the uh, some before means if you are going to install anything in your system, you should be aware means uh, why there is name node. What is that name node? So first we have to see some. Uh, it will take around one to two class. Then we can go mm -hmm. for the Hadoop uh, installation Hadoop in your system. System. Yeah. So I can send you by the email for the videos, okay? And uh, you have to download the Hadoop, uh, Hadoop 1.1 version, okay, 1.2 version, and uh, Java for the Linux. So I'll send the link for each and every one to download, okay? You just keep the downloading, uh, then we can go for the installation, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay then. Bye. Okay.